Praise God. Have you ever noticed on, uh, at least I've noticed it, we watch, you know, when you watch a little TV every once in a while, it's like you flip around and they got all these, they, I noticed one time, seemed like not too long ago, just all these, it's like they had a restoration show on cars on one channel, a restoration, uh, they were restoring furniture on another one, then they were flipping a house on another one and, uh, and, and restoring homes to uh, sell at a better price, you know, whatever. But uh, it's like restoration seemed to be uh, the, the order of the day on some of these TV shows. But that made me, got me to thinking also, and just some things rose up in my heart last uh, a few days on, on the fact that God restores. Amen. God restores. And this, uh, you know, this communion table we we're, we're have before us here this morning um, is uh, really, it's a, it proclaims that. It decrees that loudly that God is a restorer. God wants to restore people uh, in various man- you know, in various ways, various avenues. He wants to restore people. He's a restorer. You know, when Adam and Eve were, of course, God's crown of creation, they were set in the Garden of Eden, and uh, and God loved them. But how many of Adam and Eve sinned and blew it for all of us? Uh, they they sinned there. They committed treason in the Garden of Eden. Uh, turned their back against God, spiritual death came in, satanic dominion became a reality for all mankind. And, uh, but, but from that point on, God already had a plan of restoration in mind. God was all about restoring his man. Uh, in fact, this whole, this whole deal one day is, is going to be a completed Restoration. You realize there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. This whole earth is going to be restored one day. It's going to go through some trials and some difficulties, but then it's going to be a restoration. You know, we're going to be one day, we're going to have brand new bodies, resurrected bodies. We're, all of, everything's going to experience, you know, restoration uh, as far as those that are in the kingdom of God, and as far as God's plan. You know, how many, how many of you know you need to make sure you're on God's team, you know, in God's family uh, through receiving Jesus as Lord? Then you get to be a part of that great restoration process that God's, going, that God's wrapping this thing up in. But, but there are other, other elements of restoration as well that we get to, that we're available or are available to us that we can experience in this life. Because uh, God had a plan for restoration. God's all about restoration. Uh, you know, that word restore, it means to put back in its original state. And God still has some restoration in mind for you today. God's about bringing some restoration in your life this very day. He wants those things to become a reality. Just the fact that we have this communion table here is a celebration that God wants to restore you. It's a, it's a, it's a reminder today. You know, God will restore dreams. He'll restore, you know, vision. He'll, he'll restore uh, broken lives. Broken, God's a restorer of broken hearts. He's the healer of broken hearts, broken bodies. He's a restorer of marriages and relationships. God is the restorer. He loves to restore. It's his heart. To restore. In fact, God always has restoration in mind when it comes to you, when it comes to uh, others, when it comes to everyone. Uh, You know, God, it's interesting in in Galatians chapter 6, the the Apostle Paul, uh, the first verse there, he says, Ye which are spiritual, what did he tell the spiritual people to do? To restore. To restore those maybe who've been bound in sin, who've been, you know, caught up in. In, in, in something that's brought captivity into their life. God wants us being restorers. And he tells the spiritual among us to be a restorer. Don't be beating everybody over the head. Restore them. Amen. Amen. Uh, why? Because that's God's heart. And he wants, God, he wants his people having a heart to restore people who've been hurt, bound, uh, defeated in life in different ways. You know, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 uh, you can look there in your Bibles if you'd like. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse, uh, look at verse 18. He's, uh, he's talking about the fact that uh, you know, we're now new creatures and creations in Christ. All things have become new in Christ. Then in verse 18, 
He says, and all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation or restoration. You know, bringing people back in the right relationship with God through the power of the gospel, which is what, I mean, we all have a ministry. We're all to be agents of reconciliation. In fact, he goes on to say there in verse uh, 19, to wit that God was in Christ, or to know that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. We're to let people know, hey, God's not mad at you. You can get right with God. You can get things back, back right with God, you know, in, in right relationship with God. In other words, the price has been paid. Blood has been shed. So that's to be our primary message. Yeah, we're to let, we need to teach the word of God to Christians to let them know at times, you know, that sometimes it involves some correction. Sometimes it Im involves some reproof when we teach the word, but it's always really to bring restoration ultimately. God's all about restoring. In other words, it's to be redemptive. Even our teaching, if we have to do some correcting at times, instruction in righteousness, it's still to bring somebody, but one back to God. It's to, it's to bring a reconciliation. It's to be redemptive. It's to call someone to recognize the way I'm going is not working right now. I need to get back to the word and do it, do it like God says. And thank God we can repent. We can, the blood of Jesus will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And we can change. Why? Because God's a restorer. Because God is a restorer. Then he says now in verse 20, now we are ambassadors for Christ. That means we're agents. We're, we're, to be, we're the ones that are to be out restoring people, bringing people back into right standing with God through the power of the gospel. Amen? So you're in that ministry, and we need to make sure we are agents of that ministry in the, with the right heart recognizing we have a purpose here. We need to be spiritual people. Doesn't mean we're perfect. Doesn't mean we've arrived. But we need spiritual people right now who are somehow getting people back to Jesus. <laughs> Pointing people to Jesus. Getting people, helping people get back in the right relationship. Why? Because that's what restoration is. It's, it's helping someone get back into the position God wanted them in that they ought to be in the first place. God, God, that's what he did through Christ. He, he gave man now an opportunity to get back right with God the way God intended in the first place. That's what Jesus has brought to us. That's what God has brought to us in Christ. So we need to be restoring people as well. See, God will not require of you what he is not willing to do for you. God will not require of you what he's not willing to do for you. See, God's a restorer. Yeah, he wants us restoring people, but how many of God will restore you? He's not going to require something of you he won't do for you. God wants to restore you. If you're out of fellowship, he wants to restore you. If, if you've uh, had, you know, messed up some things in your life, he wants to restore you. Glory to God. He wants to restore you into a place where you can experience his full blessing and joy. Fulfillment of purpose. God wants to restore some things in your life. And listen, there's an anointing on the word of God. There's an anointing here today for restoration. I believe the Holy Spirit put it in my heart today. This is the, the message that it's restoration time. It's restoration time. This is a day of restoration for, for people. This is a day of restoration for you. Glory to God. He wants to restore some things in the lives of his people. You know, we, we have the wonderful story in the New Testament, Luke chapter 15, uh, that speaks of, of God's desire to restore and, and, and of the prodigal son. In Luke chapter 15, you know, of course, the story of the prodigal son, uh, the younger son, you know, God, he said, I want, I want my inheritance, dad. You know, he comes to his father. I want, I want you to divide up your, my inheritance be, between me and my brother, uh, and I want, I want mine now. So he got his inheritance, you know, and, and the Bible says he went out and spent it on riotous living. And uh, he, uh, you know, he found himself in a pretty bad state, found himself no more, no more cash to burn, you know, and he was in trouble. So he ends up, he gets hungry, uh, so hungry, he's willing to work in a pig pen and eat the pig food. 
So he's, he's there eating pig slop and, uh, and, and, find, and just all of a sudden the Bible says he comes to himself, you know, and he realizes, man, I could at least go home and my dad will let me be a hired servant maybe. And I, I can you know, live a little better than this. And uh, so he, he's on the way home. And he, uh, here in uh, Luke chapter 15, look, let's pick it up at verse 20. Luke 15, verse 20. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him. Notice he was a long way off and his father was already looking down the road. I want you to get a picture of the Heavenly Father. He has a heart to restore. He didn't have to go slap Dad on the back and have him turn around. Dad's already looking for him down the road. How many of the Father's already looking down the road? <laughs> he's been anticipating. He, he it's his heart. He desires. He's yearning to restore his children. Whether they've been out of fellowship or just to restore them in other areas of life. His father saw him. He had compassion on him. See, God wants to put you, he, he loves you so much, he wants to restore you, get you back into the place you ought to be. That's what restoration, get you back where you ought to be. That's what God desires. That's his heart. He wants to give people the desires of their heart. Restoration is always on his mind. Hmm. Restoration is always on his mind. Glory to God. He wants to restore your body. He wants to restore your financial situation if you've messed it up. He wants to, re he wants to restore vital relationships in your life. He wants to restore you into a place where you're now ruling and reigning with Christ. Glory to God. We see that again. You know, he had, he had compassion. See, the father didn't have a stick waiting to beat him over the head with the father had compassion. Now, yes, this young man had to repent. You know, he had to repent. He had to turn. He had to come back to the father. But the father was already looking down the road with compassion, ready to forgive. And then the father in verse 22, he says, uh, the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe. Well, aren't you glad for the robe of righteousness? You didn't have to earn it. You didn't have to work for it. You didn't have to go to rehab for 12, 12 weeks to get it. Amen. This young man didn't either. He, he said, put the robe on him. He's in right relationship with me. He's restored. Put the robe of righteousness on him. He didn't work for it, but it's by, how many of us by grace through, through faith? Now, we need to walk that out, but how many of us still, you don't earn it. You don't earn that robe of righteousness. He didn't earn it here. But thank God for the love of the Father and the Father's desire to restore. And so he, you know, the, the Father says, here's a robe also, uh, and, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. Put a ring. Uh, you know, uh, th that ring means now the son, he, he has a signet ring. He can, he can sign for the family. He can, he can put the, his stamp, his ring on, on a piece of paper. And that means that's, that's, he has the authority now restored to him. To exercise the family name. Praise God. Did you know you've had re authority restored to you in Christ? Ha that's the way God intended it all along. Now through the blood of Jesus. See, Adam lost that authority. He had dominion in the garden. But now, because of the blood of Jesus, that authority has been restored. Glory to God. Jesus said, he said to his disciples, and he's saying to you and I today, behold, I give unto you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Thank God for authority. Thank God. He, he's put the ring on our finger. We didn't earn it. We didn't work for it. We didn't deserve it. But Jesus shed his blood so we could enjoy it and have that position. So he had his name restored. He had his wealth restored. He, he was back in authority. Then it was just time to party. Kill the fatted calf and have a party. Glory be to God. They rejoiced because restoration had come to that house. See, it's a time to rejoice when restoration has come. Restoration has come. Hallelujah. See, restoration is always on God's mind. 
In Luke chapter 4, you were there in Luke 15. Look over in Luke 4. This is Jesus. This is, was his custom everywhere he went. Every city, village he went into. He would go into the synagogue of Luke 4, verse uh, six, uh, 16. says he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and as his custom was. Words, this is what he did. He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And there was delivered to him the book of, Isaiah, of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives. Do you notice some restoration here? Deliver, though, in other words, if, you, if you're captive, he wants you back into the state of freedom. He wants you in the place where you ought to be, where he, where he initially intended man to be. Remember, he put man in the garden and he, he gave him supply. He gave him blessing. He gave him more than enough. So that's why we're to preach the gospel to the poor. This gospel ought to cause people's lives to change from poverty to blessing. Spiritually and naturally. That's what the power of this gospel will do. That's the anointing that's on this word. And recovering of sight to the blind and to set at liberty them that are bruised. How many of God wants you free from things that bind you and bruise you and have hurt you? He goes on to say in verse 19, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. In the Greek, that's the year of Jubilee. <laughs> it's the year of Jubilee. Uh, one translation says the year of freedom. The Amplified says you're the year where the uh, free, free favors abound. Favors. It's a year of favor. It's a year of freedom. But he's talking about the year of Jubilee. See, that was in, that was in reference to the book of, uh, of Leviticus. In Leviticus, every 50 years, I mean, the Old Testament, every 50 years, this is what the children of Israel would do. Every 50 years, a trumpet would sound and the people would shout Jubilee. And, and what that meant was that everybody was restored. God's into restoration. God's into flipping houses. Well, the Bible says you're a temple, you're a house, right? He wants to flip your house today. He wants to do some renewing and restoring in your life. Amen. Uh, but uh, under, again, Israel, if on the year of Jubilee... If someone had lost a house, you know, that they can go back when that trumpet blew on that, in that 50th year on the day of atonement, uh, because it, you know, it was a day of atonement, which means blood, blood was shed. See, all the blessings of God are because blood was shed. And on that day of atonement, the, the, the trumpet would sound, everybody would shout jubilee throughout the land. And if you had lost a house, you could go back into that house and say, get out of my kitchen, darling. It's my kitchen again. If, you're, if, you're, if your children had gone into slavery, you, you, go, you can go find them and say, give me my babies back. Amen. Amen. It was a time of restoration, a time of restitution. And so Jesus comes on the scene now here in Luke chapter 4. And he says, from this day forward, from this day forward. This scripture is fulfilled. Praise God. What's he saying? He said, you don't have to wait for a 50th year now. Amen. He's saying, I am the Jubilee. Amen. I am Jubilee. I am restoration. I'm your restoration. If you have me, you have restoration. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> See, jubilee is jubilee now. Rest, everybody say restoration is now. Restoration. See, now's the time. It's restoration time now. Jesus, because Jesus came, shed his blood, rose from the dead, you and I have restoration now. And it's ongoing. It's every day. You have restoration now. You have restoration next year. You'll have restoration in 10 years. Restoration is always right now. 
You don't have to wait for the trumpet to sound. It's already sounded. That's what he's saying. Restoration is here. Jubilee is here. Jesus became sin on the cross. He was made a curse. Why? So that we could be blessed. So that we could be set free. So that we could become the righteousness of God. It's Jubilee now and forever. You don't have to earn it. All you got to do, what you need to do now, if you can believe it, you can have it. If you can believe it, you can have it. You don't have to wait for 50 years. Believing it and receiving it makes it a reality in your life. You mix faith with this gospel that we're proclaiming this morning. You mix faith with it. Hallelujah becomes reality in your life. Praise God. It's restoration time. Today is your day of restoration. Oh, but pastor, it doesn't look like Jubilee for me. I don't care. It is. It doesn't look like I've been set free. It doesn't look like I can have restoration. It doesn't look like God can turn my financial situation around. It doesn't look like God can restore that relate. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It is Jubilee. It is. Are you going to believe it? That's the challenge for all of us. We get to believe it. We get to receive it. Praise God. It's the year of the Lord's favor. It's yours now. Oh, but pastor, I'm the one that messed up my dream. I'm the one that messed up my my blessings, messed up that business opportunity. I messed up. Well, wasn't the prodigal restored? He messed up a lot. Restoration was still on the father's mind. Well, if it was on the Father's mind for a servant under the old covenant, it's certainly on the Father's mind for a son who's part of the family in this new covenant. I'm a child of God. You're a child of God. Restoration is mine now. Mm -mm -mm. Hallelujah. Restored sonship. Restored authority. Restored dominion. Over the enemy. Look in the book of Joel in the Old Testament. Won't you see something there? Some good restoration scripture here. Because restoration is on God's mind. Go back in the white pages. Find, find Daniel, then Hosea, and then keep going to the right. And you'll run into Joel. Chapter 2. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody say it's restoration time. Verse 25, and I will restore to you. See, restoration's on his mind, isn't it? It's true under the old covenant. It's true now. I'll restore to you the years that the locust has eaten. The canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm. My great army which I sent among you. Verse 26. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. Praise God. See, if you'll step out and start believing the the reality of the jubilee, the the truths of the gospel uh, that that we're talking about here this morning... God will never fail you. You'll never be ashamed. You'll never left, be left standing wondering why God didn't work this out for you. Amen. Glory to God. Is anybody else getting excited this morning? I, I got really excited the first service and it's starting to happen again. But you need to come along with me today. We had to shout in time in that first one. I, I want to see if the second group can get it. I know it has to build up sometime for you, but I, I'm already excited. I'm excited. Amen. See, I, I believe that this word came, you know, this is something, it's restoration time. That God wants to do some restoring in some people's lives today. Hallelujah. 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 He needs, you to, he needs some folks to take hold of this. 
Take hold of this. Stop putting things off into the future. Oh, one day, someday, God's got no. Forget that. You need to. You need to take hold of this. Sink your teeth into this today, right now. Now's the time. Today's the day of salvation. This is your time of jubilee. Praise God. Praise God. And he, you'll never be ashamed. God never wants you to be ashamed. And I don't care how long it's looked bad. I don't care how long it's looked like it isn't going to turn around. <laughs> I don't care how long it just seems like the devil keeps winning. I don't care. It doesn't change the truth. And God, you'll never be, you, you'll, God will never leave you ashamed if you'll believe in this jubilee. If you'll believe that restoration is now. If you'll believe that there's an anointing to totally turn your situation around. From death to life. From defeat to victory. From sickness to health. Complete restoration is yours today. It's yours. Say, restoration is mine. Restoration. Say, jubilee is, now. jubilee is now. Amen. That's what Jesus said. Jubilee is now, guys. It's right now. Stop looking for the 50th year. There ain't going to be another trumpet sounding. Amen. This is it. The trumpet has sounded. We're sounding the trumpet right now of, of what's already been done through the preaching of the word, teaching of the word, so that we can lay hold of this reality in our life. Oh, glory be to God. God's in the restoring business. Well, how does it work? You say, Father, I believe you're restoring me right now. I believe you're restoring my family. I believe you're restoring my health. I believe you're restoring my situation. Re restoration is mine. I believe it. I receive it. And that's all you think. That's all you talk. That's all you believe. I don't care what it looks like tomorrow or the next day. I don't care what it smells like. I don't care what it, it, it sounds like. It's mine. Amen. I don't change. I keep saying what, what I believe. I keep saying what the word says. I am restored. Restoration is mine now. Not going to be, hope to be, wish to be, one day will be. No, it's mine now. That's all I talk that's all, I, that's all I think. I don't care what it looks like. God's restoring my family. God's restoring my body. God, God's in the, he, he, restoration's already mine. My finances are already blessed. My finances are already turned around. I'm having jubilee Amen. right now. So I'm going to shout about it. I'm going to praise about it. I'm going to keep rejoicing about it because it's mine right now. Woo, glory to God. <laughs> next year I'll have Jubilee next month I'll have Jubilee wherever you see me I have Jubilee Amen. victory's mine now Amen. restoration's mine now Amen. look in Isaiah chapter 61 praise the Lord praise. hallelujah hallelujah now, this one is an audience participation service, I can tell you right now. Every once in a while, let's just sit back and listen. That's fine. But sometimes you're going to have to just get in there with it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because we we're, we're still ain't done shouting right now, I can tell you right now. You may have shouted a little in that song earlier, but you still got some more shouting to do. Because if you can't shout about this... My goodness, you need, another, you need another dip. And I don't mean a dip of Levi either. I'm talking about a, a dip in the fountain filled with blood. Hallelujah. Because this is what it's all about right here. This is where the rubber meets the road right here. You got to believe this gospel. If you're going to see some things change in your life, this is the gospel. You are free. You are delivered. Jesus already became a curse for you. The trumpet's already sounded. Restoration, restitution, victory is already yours. And you've got to take it now. That's what this faith is all about. You got it now. 
Not one day, one day, one day, one day. Forget that song. This is where Jesus preached from, right here, when he go into the synagogue, Isaiah 61. <laughs> oh, I'll, say, I'll never be ashamed. Amen. Woo, praise God. I'll never be ashamed. Why? Because I believe the word of God. Jesus stood up and he started preaching out of Isaiah 61. Spirit of the Lord's upon me because the Lord's anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. He sent me to bind the brokenhearted, proclaim liberty to the captives, opening of the prison to them that are bound. All that has to do with what? Restoration. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. That's the year of Jubilee. Now notice here Isaiah goes on to say, and the opening, uh, I'm sorry, verse 2, and the day of vengeance of our God. How many of you know, Jesus didn't proclaim that because how many of you know, it wasn't a day of vengeance yet? Amen. This is still prophetic of, another, of a time yet to come during the tribulation period. I mean, we're not appointed under wrath, the Bible says. We're, we're not appointed under wrath right now. There is going to be a time of wrath, but thank God we're going to be in a different venue watching it from a different location after the rapture of the church because we're not appointed under wrath at this time. doesn't mean there's, you can't open the door to the devil in your life because you can, but that's not God's wrath. That just means you've opened the door to the devil and let the devil in. See, some people try to pour, pour the wrath of God out on everybody, but this is not the time of wrath. Doesn't mean there's not some personal judgment for situations. That doesn't mean, sometimes that just means God's hand is removed. He has to allow some things to happen in people's lives because they, of their disobedience and opening the door to the devil. But God's not a God, he's not pouring out his wrath in this day. Amen. There is a day for that to come where, you, where the vengeance of the Lord will be, will be seen and known in the earth. But thank God we're going to be in a different place. We're coming back with him. Praise the Lord at the end of the tribulation period. Well, praise God. But notice here, <clears throat> I want to get to um, these next few verses. To appoint unto them, verse 3, that mourn in Zion to give unto them beauty for ashes. Notice the exchange that takes place. Why? Because God's all about restoring his people. And that's why Jesus went to the cross so that the great that divine exchange could take place. He would take your curse so you could have God's blessing. And all this has to do with an exchange here, the garment of praise, the oil of joy, <clears throat> excuse me, for mourning. Garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And they shall, now I want, verse four, we can spend time on that, but look at verse four. And they shall build a oasis, oasis and they shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities. Notice this, the desolations of many generations. Uh, and and that, was quick, that kind of was quickened to my heart here, this desolation of many generations. Uh, you realize that uh, a lot of times the devil, he'll use things like, he'll say, well, you know, gran your grandmama had that disease. Or your, your, your family tree is, is littered with, with people that are bound by this addiction and have this problem. And so the devil, he'll you start having a little pain or, a little, or, 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 or something, you know, or, or a certain wrong desire comes into your heart, and the devil will tell you, you know, that's just like your, that's just like your family tree. You're, you're in that same line. That's a curse on your family. That's something you're going to have to, you know, you, you might as well just, just give in to it because there's nothing you can do about it. How many of the devil's a liar? I said the devil's a liar. Satan will try to bring fear to you and tell you you're going to get that heart disease because that's what your dad had. That's what your, your granddad had. No, here's what you can say because this is your jubilee now because you've been redeemed from the curse now. This is what you can say. No, all that stuff in my family tree, it stops at my door. You realize that's true, don't you? You can stand at your door of your life and your house and say, this doesn't come any further. In fact, for me and my seed, we're blessed. Amen. And this all turns around. My children are blessed. My grandchildren are blessed. 
And you stake your claim for what is rightfully yours in Christ now. And the fact that you're in Jubilee right now. Hallelujah. You're redeemed. You're restored. Praise God. Verse, look at verse 7. For your shame, you shall have double. Now, this is, all part of the, this is all part of the blessings of Jubilee. This is all part of, this is all restoration scripture. This is what God, this is what we have now because we have Jesus. Oh, praise God. This is what we have now. So you may have had some things in your life that have brought shame into your life. You may have had some experiences. There may be even people in the world or even other Christians that, 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 that look at you with shame. Uh, and you may, have, you may have experienced things that have brought shame or caused shame, broken relationships, business failures. Listen, God's not looking down on you. It's restoration time. Restoration's on his mind. And he said, I'll give you double. He said, I'll give you double for what you've lost. Hallelujah. You know, I've messed up some things. I've, said, I've made some mistakes where it's cost me. You know, I still had a right to go back to this scripture and say, all right, Lord, I'm the one that blew that. I repent for that. But you know, just to prove, just to show how great and good you are, I claim double for that. Amen. I've done that. Okay, I claim double. I may have messed that up. Or the devil, or sometimes it's just the devil gets in. He does, he does a number in your life. Maybe you didn't cut him off or shut the door like you should have. Maybe the devil got in. I say, well, the devil may have stole, but he's going to have to pay back double. But God's going to bring me the double for it. I mean, I, in other words, I'm not looking to the devil to do anything. He's defeated. I'm looking to God to bring double. He'll bring double for my trouble. How about you? He's going to bring double for my shame, double blessing, double restoration. <laughs> How many know we're on the side that can't be whipped if we refuse, if we refuse to not be whipped? Amen. Now, how many know you're going to have to believe this? Amen. You're going to have to receive this. You're going to have to declare this. Amen. And you can't be wishy-washy. You can't be going up and down, back and forth, double-minded. Double-minded people don't get things. We've got to get firmly established in these realities, build them in our heart, and get them coming out of our mouth and keep them coming out of our mouth. See, whatever the devil meant to destroy you, God says, I don't have to be ashamed. Because he'll turn it around for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Notice this. I did, let's don't stop there. For your shame, let's read the rest of verse 7. For your shame you'll have double, and for confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore in their land they shall possess the double. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. In their land they'll possess the double. Praise God, praise God, praise God. It may not look good right now, but guess what? It's just not over yet. And that's what you need to do when the devil says, you ain't, getting, you ain't got no double. You ain't even got no single. You ain't got anything. You, you, you're still behind. <laughs> praise God. I said, praise God. I don't care what it looks like right now. It's just not over. It's not over till I say it's over. And I don't say it's over. See, you can't quit. This is restoration. This is yours. This is Jubilee. It's yours. Jubilee is now. Restoration is now. Now is the time of restoration. You got to believe you got it now. I don't care what you see right now. You got to believe you got it right now. Because that's how faith operates. Amen. You got to believe your mind's working right, right now. Amen. Amen. You got to believe that which may have been stolen from you. It cost you financially. You got you to believe right now. God's restored double to you. The restoration's already been made for you. Believe it. Declare it. Are we going to believe this or not? Are we going to believe? I mean, th this, is, this is something we can sink our teeth into. We've all been disappointed. 
We've been disappointed in people. We've been disappointed in things. We've been, even at times we can get disappointed in God. But guess what? He's never let you down. That's why you have to get your mind back on the truths of the word. Get your mind back on Jubilee. Get your mind back on the truth. He will heal your heart. He will heal those relationships. He will turn that situation around. He will bring glory out of that. He will bring you into a place where you're not ashamed because you said, God has brought me through. God has turned this thing around. I don't care how negative it was. I've had negative things happen, and I believe God to turn them into a way that will bring him glory. Where I'm going where I'm going to advance out of it. You know, I went I had that, you know, I had a message a while years ago where I did how you can get ahead from a setback. Cuz I'd faced a big setback in my life. But I believe God wants us to be able to no matter what the devil means for evil. God will turn it for good, but we got to believe him. There was, you can get something good out of it to get to move ahead, to move forward. You can learn from things. You can take that and slap, slap the devil upside the head with it. Use it as a baseball bat up against his head. Even that thing that almost killed you, that almost destroyed you. You can use it to somehow turn the, this thing around and, and, and you can use that for God to bring some restoration in your life. God will do that for you. But you got to trust him and you got to stay with the word. You got to stay with this. Can't play with this. Remember David in 1 Samuel? Wow. 1 Samuel 30. He, I mean, they came back. He and his men came back, you know, to Ziklag where they were at at the time and and the Amalekites had gone in and taken all the women, taken all the supplies, taken all the families, burned, burned, burned the place. I mean, they wreaked, wreaked havoc in David's life and his men and his mighty men. Well, the men, they didn't just cry. They cried with David. Then they turned around and wanted to stone David. David had it doubly bad. He lost his family, his stuff. Then he also had his own men turn against him. But the Bible says... David encouraged himself in the Lord. Amen. David encouraged himself in the Lord. He said, Lord, you're my shield. You're my fortune. How many of you guys speak the word to yourself? Amen. When it looks like, <laughs> when it looks like the devil's winning, that's when you've got to believe what you, you've got to believe this stuff. You've got to say, Father, your word's true. You, I am more than, you said I was more than a conqueror through him that loves me. You said, if God be for me, who can be against me? You said, no weapon formed against me can possibly prosper. <laughs> Hallelujah. And you got to say that even with tears running down your face. You got to say that when the, when the darkest hour has come into your life. You got to be willing to believe the word of God and say that. And then David said, Lord, what, what do I, he inquired of the Lord. Thank, how many of you, you need to stay close to God during those times? Don't run from him. Run to him. David got with God. God said, here's what you do. You go pursue him. You go after him and you pursue him and you'll recover all. Amen. Everybody say recover all. Recover all. Recover all. That's restoration, isn't it? Amen. That's restoration. I said, that's restoration. Amen. Even when he had lost something, damage had occurred. <sighs> but he stuck with God. He encouraged himself. He meditated the word. He kept speaking the word. God turned it around. He said, pursue. Guess what? Jesus won the battle for you, but you're still going to have to pursue. Amen. Jesus won the fight, but guess what? You're going to have to stay in the ring and fight the good fight of faith. Amen. Jesus whipped the devil. But you're still going to have to stand your ground. Having done all to stand, you have to do what? Stand, therefore. Amen. In the armor of God, standing there speaking the truth. Standing there saying, it is written when it doesn't look like it's written. Speaking the word of God. You're going to have to pursue. That means you're going to have to stay with it. You're going to have to keep speaking the word whether you feel like it or not. Thus, to those, those are the ones that gather in the spoil. Those are the ones that pursue and do what? Recover all. You can read that in 1 Samuel 30, verses 1 through 8 or 9 there. 
Uh, it says you'll recover all. And that's what happened. They recovered. They pursued the enemy. You're going to have to fight that good fight. And you will recover all. Why? Because God's a restorer. He's a restorer. Say, this is my day of restoration. This is my jubilee. Restoration is mine now. It's not something I'm going to get. It's something I have now. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your plan. Thank you for your provision in our life. Hallelujah. Thank you that the enemy is defeated in our life. Thank you, Father, that today is the day of salvation, that we don't have to put it off into the future. Father, we thank you that the victory is ours now. Hallelujah. We thank you that we've already overcome through the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Thank you, Father, for the victory. Thank you for the victory that we have right now in Christ. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're here this morning, with every head bowed, every eye closed this moment, you're here and you've never made Jesus your Lord. You need to, there's a, there is restoration available for you, reconciliation. God wants you living with him the way he intended it to be all along in fellowship with him, in right standing with him. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, it's not loud. Praise isn't loud enough in this place. You, have, you got something to shout about this morning. I said you got something to praise God about, rejoice about. Ha, 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 ha. The devil's a liar. The devil's defeated. This is a victory day. Oh, victory day. Turnaround day. Woo. Hallelujah. Restoration. Restoration. The Lord is my shepherd. He restores my soul, my life, my family. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father, for miracles. Great, great, notable things happening. Exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think. <laughs> we receive it today. We count it as done today. Say, today is the day. This is my victory day. This is my turnaround day. This is Jubilee time. It's restoration time. It's my time. In my life, in this place, this hour, is my victory. Ha, ha, ha. Well, give God praise for it this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Yeah, it's going to be different. It's going to be different. The Holy Ghost said it's going to be different. It's going to be different. For those of you that have taken hold of this reality today, it will be different for you in the days and moments to come. <laughs> and there will be great cause of a gladness because of what you've seen the Lord do. But continue in this hour to rejoice and be glad because faith always has a shout and faith always rejoices in what the Lord has already said. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Well, let's praise him one more time then. Praise him ahead of time in faith because it's going to be different. It's going to be different and you'll know it. It'll be noticeable. It'll be tangible. 
and it'll be a testimony. Woo! David didn't just have a turnaround. He didn't just have a restoration. He didn't just recover all. He now has a testimony that was put in the Word of God forever. You realize that? So your turnaround, your victory, (laughs) is going to bring a testimony. And it won't just be, wow, look what the Lord did for me. He brought double. He brought recovery. He brought, man, he brought that miracle. (laughs) It's going to be something now you get to beat the devil over the head with. Because you get to share it. You get to share it with other people who will say, my, 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 the Lord, he is good, isn't he? Ooh, look what the Lord has done. He turned my captivity (laughs) and put a laughter in my mouth. Praise God. Hallelujah. He'll restore your joy too. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father.